Hey, what's going on guys? It's Wispin here and today I have a tutorial for you guys. I'm going to show you how you can make your own custom Pixelmon textures using Blender. And what this will actually allow you to do is to open up the Pokemon's 3D model and paint directly onto that. It makes it a whole lot easier to make your own custom textures and it's actually pretty fun. So let's just get straight into the tutorial. It's really, really easy to follow and there's only a few steps. So I want to preference this entire video with saying that I only have one or two hours experience using Blender. I'm not a professional by any means, and I barely know what I'm doing, but I do know enough to get some other people started if they want to check it out. If you guys have any helpful tips or any guides or anything useful to know at all about Blender because you've been using it a while, leave those down in the comment section below so that other people can check them out, and I'll actually find them useful as well because, like I said, I only have a few hours of experience. With that being said, I do know how to actually load up the Pixelmon models into Blender as well as their textures and how to edit those so that you can go ahead and make your own. So let's go ahead and get started off by downloading Blender. You're going to want to go ahead and visit www.blender.org slash download and you will see it right here, Download Blender. Uh, now I believe this download is for Windows, but you can go ahead and click here if you have uh, Mac or Linux or if you want to download it directly through Steam, you can do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here and just download the Windows 64-bit installer because that is what my computer is currently running. So we're going to go ahead and click that and it should just automatically begin downloading as you can see right here. So once you've gone ahead and clicked the download button and it's finished downloading, you're going to want to go ahead and run this installer. So if you just go ahead and click, it should open it up and you should see this right here and you can just go through the installation process. It's really straightforward. And once you get through the entire setup, you just click install and you will give it a second to actually install. You'll probably get prompted up on your screen giving it permission, but other than that, it should just begin to install the Blender app. And we have completed the Blender setup, so we're going to go ahead and click Finish, and that is all you need to do to install Blender. Now, there are a couple more things that we need to download before we even open up Blender, the first of which is going to be the Pixelmon mod itself. This is going to contain all of the assets that you actually need in order to create your own custom texture. So if you visit reforge.gg, you can just go ahead and click Download right here, and that will download the latest version of the Pixelmon mod. Now there is one more thing that is essential to actually making this whole process work, and this is some Blender source tools. Again, these will be linked down in the description. What these actually allow you to do is import the Pixelmon models into Blender itself. Without these source tools, you are not going to be able to do that. So of course, like the previous things, all you got to do is click the download button, and I definitely recommend putting both the Pixelmon jar file, Blender, as well as actually these source tools all onto your desktop, just so that they're easier to locate. So we have one more step before we can actually open up Blender, and that is going to be getting access to the Pixelmon asset files. It's super easy to do, and all you have to do is extract those files from the jar file that you downloaded earlier. Now, I'm going to be using a program called WinRAR. It's free, super easy to find if you just go ahead and Google W-I-N-R-A-R. -R. Really, really easy to find, but you can use some other um, tools in order to help you extract these files. This is just the one that I have. So we're going to go ahead and click Extract to this, which will extract it to a folder on our desktop. So we'll go ahead and let that run. It should take a pretty long time as there is a lot of data that needs to be extracted from this jar file. But once it's finished, we can go ahead and actually open up Blender. So once you've done that, you should have this folder right here, which you can open up and you can see will actually have a folder called assets. Now, you don't really need any of this stuff, so you can just drag this assets folder onto your desktop and you can delete the rest. So now we have a folder that contains all of the Pixelmon assets. As you can see, if we go in here, uh, there is a bunch of different folders. There is the models folder, which is going to be super important. And we can go down here and we can see the Pokemon right here. And this will actually contain all of the SMD files that we are going to need to load up into Blender in order to actually see these Pokemon's models. There is also the texture files, which is super important if you don't want to make a texture from scratch and you'd rather work off of the base texture of that Pokemon. You can get those from right here in the textures and Pokemon folder. So let's go ahead and open up Blender and begin the final few steps in order to actually complete this entire tutorial. 
Okay, so this is what Blender looks like when you first run it. It is a little bit overwhelming, I will admit. It's still overwhelming to me, as I said. I've only had a couple of hours of experience using it, but it is actually fairly easy to wrap your head around once you've gotten into it a little bit more. I know how to do some things and just barely enough to actually make this tutorial. So the first thing you're actually gonna wanna do in order to prevent from this area being completely pitch black once you actually load up a model, you're gonna wanna click right over here where it says lamp, click on that, and then you'll click this right here, and then you'll come down here to where it says Hemi, and you'll click that. And that should fix it in order to actually make it not pitch black once you start to load up the models. So you will remember we actually had those source tools that we downloaded previously, and you want to leave those in the zip file that they came in when you downloaded them. First, you want to go into File, you want to go down to where it says User Preferences, and then you'll want to go over to the Add-ons tab right here, and then come down to where it says Install Add-on from File. You'll go ahead and click that, and then you need to locate the source tools that you downloaded previously. So we'll have to go ahead and try to navigate our way to the desktop where we actually have them, and we'll click right here where it says Blender underscore source tools, and then 2.10 or whatever version you have. We'll go ahead and click that. Uh, actually, just double click that. And then we actually need to make sure that we have it checked, which we do. Okay, so make sure that's checked. And that is actually all you need to do. So you're going to go ahead and click Save User Settings. So once you've done that, you are able to actually import the model. You go over to File, Import, and then go down to where it says Source Engine uh, or .smd. That is the file type that you are going to be importing. This option right here inside File, Import, and then right here, this will not be here if you did not install the source tools properly. So if that's missing, then go back to the previous step and make sure that you install them correctly. But if you have done that and this is showing here, go ahead and click it. And now you need to go ahead and locate the asset folder. Um, now we can go to recent right here and we can see the assets folder right here. And we're going to want to go into Pixelmon and then we want to go into models and then Pokemon. And this is where you select the Pokemon that you actually want to edit the texture of. So I'm going to go ahead and actually load up one of those textures that I showed you guys earlier on in the video at the very beginning. So let's go ahead and load up Dialga because I have a pretty cool custom texture for that. So we have Dialga right here. We'll go ahead and click that folder and you want to make sure you click the one that says the Pokemon's name dot SMD. You can ignore the other three. Those are for animations. That has nothing to do with what you want. So make sure you click this correct one right here and you can just go ahead and double click that and that will load up the model into Blender. So great, we have the model loaded up now. For me, if I go ahead and push in my middle mouse button, I can go ahead and actually move around and look at the model. The next step is actually going to be adding the texture so that you can begin to edit it and have a look at it in 3D. So let's go ahead and add a texture to our Pokemon. What you're gonna wanna do is come over to the top right here and expand the list underneath of where it says your Pokemon underscore skeleton. So you expand that and then you come down to where it says your Pokemon's name with this little triangle next to it and you'll click on that. Once you have that selected, you'll come over to right here where it shows the material and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that there is only one material in this list. If there's multiple, you'll want to delete the extra ones. And after you've done that, you'll come over to the little checkerboard pattern here. And this is where we load up our texture. So uh, it should be blank. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click new right here. And then you'll come down to right here and you can choose either to create a new texture from scratch by clicking this new button or loading up a old texture or a texture directly from the Pixelmon assets that we downloaded earlier, which is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and open up the default Dialga texture. So we're going to click open. But like I said, if you want to make one from scratch, you can do that by clicking the new button right here. So we'll click open and then we need to go ahead and locate that file. Now we do have actually our desktop here in recent. We can go into assets, Pixelmon, and then we want to go into the textures folder this time. We'll go into Pokemon and then we need to locate the Dialga texture in here, which it should be somewhere over here. Here's D. Where is DI? I guess we could technically, I think, search for it here, right? Does that work? 
I don't, I don't actually know how to use, yeah, okay, we're just going to look through the list. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what that's for. <laughs> I, I honestly, like I said, I've only been using Blender for a couple of hours, but we located the texture. So we're going to go ahead and double click that to load it up. And now for you guys, it might not automatically appear. What you're going to have to do is come down over here and it should probably be on bounding box maybe, or something you're going to want to go ahead and click right on this thing next to object mode and you're going to change that to material and that will actually show you the 3d model so great we have the texture loaded we have the model loaded now we need to go ahead and actually edit it so the first thing you're going to want to actually do is come right down here to these three little lines in the corner and you're going to want to just drag straight up what that actually does is open up a second window here and we're going to go ahead and open up the texture here so that you can see the texture from above while you see the 3d model as well so then on this second one, we're going to come over to the cube here and we're going to change it to where it says UV slash image editor. And once we've done that, we can actually go ahead and, and then right here where it says plus new and plus open, we can open up the same texture file that we opened up previously. You're going to want to make sure it's the exact same one. Uh, again, you can still use this recent tab here to find it a little bit easier. And then we can come over to where it was previously, which should be somewhere around here. There's a lot of Pokemon in this game. You'll go ahead and open that up. And as you can see, now we can see the flat version of the texture as well as the 3D variant, which is really, really helpful. And now we can actually go ahead and click right where it says object mode and change it to texture paint. And that is going to allow us to draw directly onto our Dialga. Now you might not want these little balls here and all these lines all over your Pokemon. So what you can actually do is come back over to where it says skeleton right here in the top right and click the little eye icon and that will actually clear those out so you can get a better view. Um, and then down here you can actually go ahead and and come over to where it says view and where it says draw texture paint UVs. You can actually go ahead and get rid of that if you don't like the lines on there. So now we have everything ready to go. We can actually edit our model. We can edit our texture and we can do that just by painting. So we can select a color over here and we can actually just paint directly onto the model itself. Now, this is kind of where I don't know what I'm doing. I am not an artist and I have not used Blender long enough to know exactly what I'm doing. I'm sure you can find many other tutorials on YouTube for actually uh, drawing on and doing artwork on models using Blender. I recommend looking at those. Um, but you can't just paint directly onto it and you can paint up here that will change the texture uh, you can paint the whole thing green if you want you can do whatever you really want to do and you can paint different parts of the texture different colors now there are certain parts of the texture that use the same uh, part of the texture file in order to do it so if you can see we paint right here it's also going to change the opposite side it's going to mirror it across and that happens in a few different locations um, but you can take your time you can paint it however you want you can put colors all over it make it look beautiful just like I'm doing right now this looks absolutely incredible and a great thing is you can actually come down here and you can paint on this as well so if you come down to where it says view and you click paint, now you can actually paint on the uh, texture image here as well as the model itself. So if we just go ahead and color in some of this, you can see it is going to go ahead and color in up top here. Now, I don't recommend making Pokemon that look like this. It really does not look great, but if you are an artist and you know what you're doing, you can make some pretty cool stuff. So one final thing before I end this tutorial, I want to go ahead and actually show you how to save your custom textures because I know I'll probably get questions about that. So I have a really cool custom Dialga texture all loaded up here and I want to go ahead and make some modifications to it and then go ahead and save it. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint this gem here on the front of our uh, Dialga, we're going to paint it blue. So again, I'm terrible at this. Let's try, um, is there a bucket tool? Fill, uh, blue. Uh, okay, this is so bad. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, paint it blue. So there we go. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. It probably could have been done a little bit better, uh, but it's blue. So now I want to go ahead and actually save my texture. Um, you know what? Actually, let's just, oh, okay. Uh, I made the undo that well we'll leave it there we'll leave it there i won't get too crazy with this so now we got to go ahead and actually save it's pretty straightforward
So there might be better ways to do this, but from my experience, the easiest way to go ahead and save your updated texture is to come down here where it says image and then go ahead and click save as image and then go ahead and save it to a new location. So I'm going to go ahead and actually save mine to the desktop just so that I can easily find it. Now, you probably don't want to save it to the same location that you loaded the previous texture from because that will overwrite that texture and you most likely, or at least you might end up needing that texture again at some some point in the future so I recommend saving it to a different location uh, for me though I'm gonna go ahead and save image as or save as image right here and that will save it directly to the desktop as a PNG file which can be used in resource packs to go ahead and add in custom textures so after saving it you should go ahead and be able to find the PNG file uh, and it will look just like this and then you can go ahead and load that into resource packs in order to actually use it in game But I'm not going to get into that too much in this video There will be another video linked down in the description below that actually talks a little bit about making your own custom resource packs So if you are interested in that you can go ahead and check it out So hopefully you guys found this tutorial useful That is pretty much the extent of what I know how to do anything else You're gonna have to go ahead and figure out on your own either by using YouTube or asking questions over on the pixelmon Discord, which is going to be linked down in the description below, as well as my personal Discord, which has over 12,000 members. I'm sure you can find some help there as well. I just thought this was really cool. Someone showed it to me, and I think it's really helpful, and a lot of people can make a lot of cool things if they knew how to do it. So if you guys did find this tutorial helpful, make sure to go and leave a like on the video and share it with some other people that might be interested in making their own Pokemon textures. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.